Good afternoon. Happy 25th of November, 2025, the, the, the day before Thanksgiving in America. I came across an article at the beginning of October, and I've been wanting to make an article about, about it for some time. So I, I believe that this is research that's going on um, at the U U University of, of Bath or Bath, depending on what part of England, England you're from, is completely re 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 revolutionary and thinks outside the box, which, ha which has been ne ne needing to be done for a long time with MSA. So if you allow me to stick to my script so I don't ramble rem 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 on forever, the more the story is, is, is the study. What's very interesting is that we've tried to unfold the misfolding alpha synuclein protein. We've tried to stop it from happening or from folding. Um, we tried to stop it from clumping, stop it from going downhill to the rest of our system. Um, everything has been tried, you know, to, to locate biomarkers and to stop it, the spread, at, at least the spread of it, the toxicity of, of MSA even if we can't control the, the, the clumping. This study, in a nutshell, is basically saying, well, if you're going to break a bone, let, let, us, let, let us at least put a cast on it first before you break it. So we have, we have some big, big brain coming out here from England, and this is absolutely phenomenal about what I'm about to say. So we all know that our MSA is a deficit condition. It progresses relentless. It's deeply affected by both the person that has the disease and the care 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 caretakers and families who have to deal with it as well alongside them. But what I'm going to talk about is the stabilizing of native fold alpha-synuclein with short helix-constrained peptides, as you can see on the screen I'm sharing. Stabilizing. Never heard that word in a journal when it comes to MSA or Parkinson's. So what, what, is it, what does this study mean for all of us to be engaged for understanding all of us are living with MSA, writing about it and fighting disease? This study cannot be overstated. overstated. It cannot be, I cannot yell high, loud, loud, loud enough from, from the mountaintops. So to summarize the core findings of this study, scientists at the University of Bath, or again, Bath, depends what part of the country you're from, in collaboration with universities of Oxford and Bristol, have designed a small peptide molecule that locks the alpha locks the the protein alpha alpha synuclein into its healthy native shape, thereby preventing the clumping or aggregation of the protein as implicated in the neurodegenerative process of diseases like Parkinson's disease. So, in detail. Alpha synuclein normally adopts a flexible strand structure, and when properly functioning, functioning, it takes a, a, a helical shape that is critical for synaptic vesicle function. In conditions like Parkinson's, alpha synuclein misfolds, ag aggregates, and forms toxic clumps that damage or kill nerve cells, triggering tremors, as you can see and hear in my voice. So stiffness, stiff, stiff, stiffness that you can see in my posture, in my, in my, in my head, and, mo and motor impairment, which you can tell by my lack of being able to speak properly and stumbling, which is, I had never done before. Oh, so bath, bath, the, the bath team's peptide is constrained into a hel hel helical shape. It penetrates brain-like cells, reduces the deposits of alpha-synuclein alpha, alpha in a warm model. That's right, I said a worm model, and it improves movement in that model. Well, early animal cell model data only, the finding is described as a significant step towards the developing a new peptide-based treatments for cure currently untreatable neurodegenerative conditions. Well, you might be asking a worm and, and helical shape, well, why does this matter for MSA? I'm glad you asked. MSA is not exactly Parkinson's disease. Uh, so how does this apply? Well, great question. 
let's clarify, let's clarify this carefully. They both had shared underlying protein, which is the alpha synuclein. MSA is categorized as a synucleinopathy. It shares its key, a key pathological feature with Parkinson's disease, which is abnormal accumulation of alpha synuclein. Specifically, in multiple systematically, the hallmark finding is large deposits of aggregated alpha synuclein in, in the, oh, I don't know if you get this right here, basically glial gl gl cells, all the dendrocytes or glial cells, which are called glial cell, glial cell plasma inclusions or GCIs. That's the difference between MSA and the Parkinson's. Research describes MSA, obviously, we, as we know, as a very fast-moving disease um, characterized by both autonomic system failure and motor cerebral impairment. So what's the di difference in cell types but similar challenge, right? We are like Parkinson's, but different. Parkinson's disease typically features neuronal accumulation of alpha synuclein in neurons. MSA features gl glial accumulation. The mechanism is different, but the protein culprit overlaps. What the BAST study addresses is the misfolding and clumping process of alpha, alpha synuclein. This, this is a process also present in MSA, albeit with different cell types and strains, where alpha, or alpha synuclein strains may underlie severity and rapid progression. So what is the implication of targeting alpha synuclein, alpha synuclein aggregation for benefiting MSA? Well, given that the misfolding and aggregation of alpha synuclein is central to the MSA pathology, a treatment that stabilizes alpha synuclein's normal shape prior to aggregation presents a plausible therapeutic strategy for MSA, perhaps more so than therapies that only target neurons or dopamine systems which have limited efficacy in MSA. While the VAST study did not specifically address MSA models, at least as reported in this article that I'm re 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 referencing here, the me mechanistic overlap means that this is a hopeful proof of concept. Now, I want to be very clear here. The best, the best study was in, in animal cellular models so far, not in human clinical trials. It is a gigantic leap from models to humans, and it is very steep. MSA is especially challenging, as, as one puts it, although there is no direct evidence that alpha synuclein is the cause of MSA progression, in a, in, an abundance of evidence supports the potential scenarios that alpha synuclein to the pathogenic cascade of MSA, the, 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 the deterioration. Because MSA features glial inclusions and unique, unique strains of alpha synuclein, translation of a therapy that works in Parkinson's models may require an adaptation or new approaches. Well, that, that's everything in life, right? You, you, you pull from something you know, you make changes, and you, you, you apply it to your life, to your, your situation. Unfortunately, until human trials show efficacy, quality of life remains reliant on sympathetic and supportive care, PT, autonomic support, family caregiver networks, research participation. We all know this. But what does this mean for us today? For patients and families, it gives a reason to stay engaged with research updates, possibly a reason to participate in clinical trials, advocate funding, and sustain hope. For researchers, it affirms that targeting protein misfolding and protein structural stimulation is a promising route, not only for Parkinson's, but possibly MSA and other syndicalopathies, other diseases that share the same traits. For, broader, for the broader community, it underscores the importance of interdisciplinary collabor collaboration between, you know, and basically between protein engineering, neuroscience, and translational medicine and of storytelling to patient voice and driving research awareness and funding. Every donation, every conversation, every research participation adds weight to the momentum behind discoveries like the one at Bath University, University of Bath. And as science moves forward, you have a unique advantage. You know, you know the condition, you, you witness the struggle, you tell the story, 
that you become not only a survivor, but an advocate, a beacon, a champion of what comes next. So in conclusion, the article I have had before you that scientists halt toxic brain protein behind Parkinson's and landmark study signals a turning point in our understanding of neurodegenerative degenerative disease. For MSA, it might not be the answer yet, but it is a doorway. In every story, every voice that says, I refuse to surrender, helps push the door, the door wider. Mm-hmm. As you know, some of these research topics and illustrations can be difficult to show, but I, I have not heard of somebody trying to say, you know, what? We, we know, we, we know the structure, be it, be it your legs, you know, your neck or these protein is, is going to this fold. So let's, you know, let's, let's try to brace it and keep it from this folding in, in the first place. I've, I've never heard of something like that. Now I, I do a lot of reading, a lot of research. My mom would tell you that. <laughs> But this seems like completely out of the box, very optimistic that it can work. Now they did it with animal trials, and that's something you know. That unfortunately, it takes it takes time for things to migrate from, you know, primates and animals to humans through clinical trials and a drug, right? But to have a, the three universities that are just sitting here saying, you know, what, if we can't stop them this folding. At least let's keep the structure and that will keep it from clumping because the clumping is the cause of what, what happens to MSA. MSA is a bad problem. It's a mis- misfolding of opposite nuclear protein. But it's just it's just not the misfolding of the protein that, that hurts us, that makes us have an MSA. It's the accumulation, the large deposits that start the progression, the, the downhill trickle effect cascading as, as, as it says, you know, for MSA patients and the issues we have, as you can tell by my voice, this is actually a pretty good day, but my speech is a perfect example of how cascading the effects of MSA can be because months, months ago, I was not talking like this and here I am almost at the end of the such talk talking as well, right? This is the best I can do by myself relaxed, albeit I feel sick, um, you know, I'm trying to drink and clear my throat and have no saliva pulling and, and swallow properly, yada, 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 right? This is, this is a great research study that they're doing landmark, it says, and I agree, landmark, that we know we can't stop the misfolding right now. That, 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 that saving grace is for down down the road. What can we do now? Well, let's try to just keep it from folding in the first place. All right, keep it from, if it doesn't fold, it can't aggregate. It can't, it can't pile up and cause the rapid succession of MSA. I think this is a great topic. I, you know, I've been wanting to talk about this for, for a while since I heard about it. And it's something to look for in the future. And I encourage you to look into it. I'll post the link into the description down below. And on behalf of Daisy Page, myself, our families and friends, we want to say thank you. We appreciate you. We're not going anywhere. We, we, we may have failing voices and other, other things, but we are still here trying to see future, trying to show you hope, trying to give you hope, um, whether that's from interviews or even simple publications found online, for instance, for instance here in SciTech Daily. So again, we appreciate, we appreciate, appreciate your support. As again, remember, be, be MSA strong, but we, we are all MSA crusaders. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.